Hello everyone, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert PTE teachers here at E2 Language. In this live class, we're going to look at the science behind PT speaking. And in this particular lesson, we're going to look at chunking. So in week one, if you missed it, we looked at word stress. So that was the emphasis that you place on particular syllables in a word, like robot or fantastic or helicopter or personality, okay? That's a critical aspect of speaking and getting a high score in the PTE. In week two, we looked at sentence stress. So that is the stress or the emphasis that you place on a particular word in a sentence to change or give it particular meaning. For example, John will drive to the cinema tonight, okay? So what we're going to do in today's class is look at chunking. And I guess you're thinking, what is chunking? Well, this is where we use pausing to create chunks. So if I say to you, silences speak more loudly than words. What I'm doing here is adding pauses around particular chunks of language. And you're actually graded on this in your PTE, okay? You are graded on your ability to connect speech or chunk particular words together. So what we're going to do in this class more specifically is I'm going to show you what no chunking sounds like, which is terrible. I'll also show you what too much chunking sounds like, which is just as bad. I'll show you what weird chunking sounds like before finally showing what correct chunking sounds like. And what we're going to do is apply this to read aloud paragraphs, but this will apply to, uh, it will apply to retail lecture, it will apply to describe image, it will re uh, apply to repeat sentence as well. So all of the PT speaking tasks. Plus, by the way, this is a great skill to learn if you have to public speak, if you have to give uh, presentations. Knowing when to pause, for example, is a powerful way to draw in speakers' attention. Okay, so this is what no chunking sounds like. Doesn't really matter whether people speak with an accent as long as they can be easily understood. Many people now believe that in an increasingly globalized world, we should blah, 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 blah. This is wrong, okay? So the PTE algorithm, what it's doing is it's assessing particular words and word stress and sentence stress, and also how well that you're connecting particular chunks of speech together and how well you're separating out others, okay? So this is wrong, that's bad. Let's look at too much chunking. Does it really matter whether people speak with an accent at, you get the point, this is also wrong, okay? You're not chunking correctly. And you're not trying to sound like a robot either. You wanna sound natural. The PTE algorithm, as much as people try to game it and uh, think of hacks and stuff, the hack is this. You need to speak as fluently and as clearly and with the best pronunciation as possible. Because how it's coded or how it's created is based on thousands and thousands of uh, real speakers inputting their data into the system and it's established or it has established what is correct chunking, pronunciation, pausing, word stress, sentence stress, etc. That's the hack. The hack is speak better English, okay? There's no gaming of this thing. All right, let's look at weird chunking. Does it really matter whether people speak with an accent as long as they can be easily understood? Many people now believe that in an in this is bad. It's just weird. I can't really understand, well, I can't understand what I'm saying. And if I were listening to this, I wouldn't understand what you were saying, okay? So that is weird chunking, it's wrong. You would be poorly scored for your fluency for that, okay? Let's look at correct chunking. Just before we do, if you're not yet a subscriber to this YouTube channel, click the subscribe button, become one of our fabulous subscribers to this channel. Uh, yeah, that's all. See, we, we release videos each week 
and uh, they're good and people like them. And if you do subscribe, you'll be the first to hear about them. So that's good. Also feel free to like this video and leave a comment. Okay, okay there's a funny little uh, typo error there. I'm just gonna keep going, don't worry about it. It does say correct chunky, ready? Does it really matter whether people speak with an accent as long as they can be easily understood? Many people now believe that in an increasingly globalized world, we should accept variations in pronunciation, that is, accent. However, there's no point in speaking with an accent if people can't understand you, is there? Okay, that is good. What I've done is I've grouped particular words together and I've paused at important points. Okay, that's what you need to do. I want you to try. What I want you to do, I'll give you 30 seconds. Imagine this is a read aloud. Read and pause. Now I've got two different types of pauses here. I've got a short pause and I've got longer pauses, okay? I'll give you 30 seconds, your time starts now. Okay, how was that for you? Hopefully, when you were reading, you were reading meaningful chunks of language that made sense, and the pauses made sense at those particular times to emphasize the chunks of language, right? That's really what you're doing. This is a powerful uh, technique, not just for the PTE, but also in real life. Okay. So how do we chunk? How do we know what to chunk and where to pause? Let's look at this uh, text here. And what I've done is I've got two highlights. I've got yellow highlights for, let's call them, <laughs> what can we call them? Meaning units. In linguistics, they're called meaning units. But let's, yeah, let's just call them meaning units. So they're parts let me just read it and then you'll know what I mean. Does it really matter? Okay, that in and of itself makes sense. Does it really matter? People speak with an accent. They can be easily understood. Many people now believe in an increasingly globalized world, we should accept variations in pronunciation. There's no point in speaking with an accent. If people can't understand you, okay, maybe just if we got rid of if, people can't understand you. What you can see here in the yellow that each of these parts is a meaningful unit of speech. Like if you took that out, if you took it out of the paragraph and just read it by itself, it makes sense. It's not, some of them are almost complete sentences or maybe they could be a complete sentence. Some of them are parts of sentences but the part itself makes sense. It's got a subject and a verb, for example. Some of them, like an increase in an increasingly globalized world, this one here. Well, what have we got here? We've got, we've got a noun phrase. We've got this critical wor word world here, and then we've got an adjective and an adverb and a preposition and article in an increasingly globalized world. So that comes together together to form a chunk of meaning, right? So, you know, technically there are ways or reasons why we chunk things together, article plus noun or article plus adjective plus noun, but to be honest, in read aloud, when you have 30 seconds to prepare, there's no time to be thinking, oh, is that an article? Okay, there's a noun. It's not like that at all. So the way that you should approach this on test day is to when you do your pre-reading, when you have your preparation time, is to think, okay, which of the parts of the sentence or which are the parts of the paragraph that have meaning in and of themselves because they're the ones that I'm gonna to chunk together. Okay, let's look back at this because there are some blue highlights here. The blue highlights are kind of like connecting words or connecting phrases, aren't they? 
and some I've just left out because they don't really fit. <clears throat> Does it really matter whether people speak with an accent as long as they can be easily understood? Okay, so these sort of are connecting the different chunks together, right? Especially this one there, however, this has a double pause. However, pause, there's no point in speaking with an accent. So these kinds of words will be conjunctions like and or however or therefore, for example, uh, words like relative pronouns, that, which, who, these types of words, and also phrases like as long as or uh, depending on chunks like uh, phrases like this will become separate, that will separate out the chunks, okay? It's kind of tricky. Basically, you need to practice and you probably need feedback. By the way, if you do need feedback on your speaking, check out e2language.com, sign up for free, uh, or think about signing up as a paid member because we have tutorials, one-on-one -on -one tutorials with expert teachers. We give speaking feedback that you submit through the computer and get feedback. And you can also join our live daily classes where we actually, twice a day, we give live classes where you can learn about this sort of stuff to improve your English and improve your test score. Okay, let's do a task. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read this with correct chunking. And what I want you to do is to, as I'm reading, think about where I'm pausing, okay? Imagine uh, putting a slash in where I pause, okay? So I'll read in three, two, one. Pausing, or its lack, contributes to the perception of word groups or chunks. Chunks commonly highlight particular vocabulary or fixed expressions. The well-known English chunk, know what I mean, sounds like a single word, know what I mean, due to a blurring or rushing the articulation of adjacent word syllables. So hopefully, don't worry about you try, you try next. Hopefully while I was reading, I did this. I'll try again, pausing or its lack contributes to the perception of word groups or chunks. Chunks commonly highlight particular vocabulary or fixed expressions. The well-known English chunk, know what I mean, sounds like a single word. Know what I mean? Due to blurring or rushing the articulation of adjacent word syllables. Cool, so that is where I actually pause. These are correct pauses and correct chunking. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to read with this pausing and chunking. Okay, how did you go? Hopefully while you read that, the pausing and the chunking, uh, how can I say, hopefully it emphasized the meaning of what you were saying. I think ultimately when you're doing a read aloud or a describe image or just speaking in general, what you need to try to do and be conscious of is emphasizing meaning. That's ultimately what language is, right? And that's what, you're, what you want your listener to receive is meaning. And so what pausing and chunking do is allow that meaning to be emphasized. Cool. Guys, if you need help with your PTE, check out e2language.com. It's 100% online test prep with live group classes every day, tutorials, speaking and writing feedback, methods, overview, heaps of practice questions, and lots, lots more. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful. Uh, remember to subscribe for more PTE science of speaking and much, much more. My name is Jay, I will see you soon.